Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. It's funny how things work. I don't think I've ever received a question about how to use Denoise AI as a Photoshop plugin until yesterday. I received two different emails from different people asking me that very thing. So today we're going to take a look at using Denoise AI as a Photoshop plugin. I have this image here and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And you could probably see that there is a considerable amount of noise on this image. So it's a prime candidate for Denoise AI. Now, the first thing you should do once you open your image into Photoshop, you'll have it as a background layer, is duplicate the background layer. Layer. Hit Command J on a Mac, Control J on a PC. Now, optionally, you may want to rename the, the layer you just created. I'll call it Denoise. AI. You don't have to do that, but that in case you have a lot of layers, it sometimes helps to name the layer so you know what you did on each layer. Now, this again is optional. I like to make that layer a smart object. The reason being is when it's a smart object and I add a filter such as Denoise AI to it, I'll be able to go back in and re edit it if I want to. Uh, so I'm going to right click right on the layer and we're going to go down to Convert to Smart Object. And you can see that now it has this little square in the corner. It is now a Smart Object. So I'm ready now to send this to Denoise AI. To do that, you go up to the top Filter menu, down to Topaz Labs, and over to Topaz Denoise AI. And it will now take this image and open it up into Denoise AI. Now I have a uh, Denoise set up in the comparison view. It defaults to that because that's what I usually use. And in the comparison view, I could see three of the four AI models. Uh, in the top left-hand corner is the original image. You can't change this. I did receive a question. Uh, someone asked, can't I add that fourth AI, um, AI model here? You can't, you can't change that. So you only could show three at any one time. So right now on the top right is the standard AI model that used to be called, called the noise AI. In the lower left is the clear model. In the lower right is the low light model. They also have a new one called severe noise. And if you want to see that, just click on one of the models that you want to replace it with severe noise. And you could then click over here on the right and it will now make that one severe noise in the lower right. And just looking at it, it didn't look as good as low light. Low light looked better. Now looking at them, um, the three different modes, all of them are very comparable right out of the box. And I should add that I have them, I think, all set to auto. So standards on auto, that means the noise is looking at the image and determining the amount of noise reduction to apply and how much to enhance the sharpness automatically. Uh, clear mode. Same thing, I have auto, low light modes auto, and then if I did use severe noise, that was on auto as well. So um, what I like to do is have them on auto to begin with, take a look at it, determine which one might be better. In this case, I think the standard model is best. Then what I'll often do is I'll change the view from this four comparison view to a side-by-side -side view. So now that denoise AI model, or the standard model, is now on the right and the original image is on the left. Then I will come in and move any sliders to tweak it a little bit. Um, and then sometimes I'll move down here to post-processing. Like I could recover some original detail. There's a lot of detail here already. But if I move this to the right, what you gotta be careful is you'll start to reintroduce noise. And I think you might be able to see that I reintroduced noise a little bit by recovering original detail. So you might wanna pull that down. Color noise reduction, uh, if you see little colorful dots, usually red, green, and blue dots on the image, you'll move this to the right. Um, I think I just had that at 25 uh, myself. I think it default is at zero, but 25 is good enough. Um, it seems to have removed all the noise, maybe just a tiny bit right in here. So maybe I'll just tweak this noise up a little more to like 25. Let's see what that does. It has to re-render. And it seems to have done a pretty good job. So let's go with this. I'm going to click apply and you'll see why then I created a smart object. I mentioned that this was optional, 
But you can see now, because it's a smart object, it has a mask and it's called smart filters. So if you only want to apply the noise reduction to a very specific part of an image, you can then click on the mask, get a brush tool, hit the B key on your keyboard, and then you could um, use a brush, paint in black on the mask to remove the noise reduction from where you don't want it applied. So that's a nice feature that you could add because of that. Uh, it's there automatically. Of course, you could add a mask to any layer if you wanted to. If this was a normal layer, you could add a mask to it. But the main reason why I like to make it a smart object, you see it says denoise, Topaz Denoise AI right here. If I want to go back in and re-edit this, double click right on that, and then it will open up the image in Denoise AI. And it is allowing you to re-edit. And you can see on the left is the original noise image with the noise in it. So I could come back in, I could go, let's say, back to comparison view and just make sure that I really wanted to use this standard model. Maybe one of the other models is better. I could just double check or whatever. I, in this case, I'm gonna stay with that standard model. I'm not gonna mess with those settings at all and just click apply. So that's why I make it a smart object. Now from this point, you're really done. Uh, let's do a before after, let's zoom in a little bit. Hit Command plus a couple times, hold the space bar in and bring it down by the bird's head. And there is the noise reduced image. There's the image with noise. Noise reduced, noise. Noise reduced, noise. So you can see it does a great job. Now at this point, what do you wanna do with the image? Well, you could export it as a JPEG. That's probably first turn on that layer. Uh, you want to, you know, if you're going to share it, social media, send it to friends, family, whatever. Uh, you'll want to go up to File, then down to Export, and then down to Export As. And then from this dialog box, you could choose the format. Uh, usually it's going to be JPEG. Uh, quality, 100%. That affects the file size. Usually... Uh, from what I've read over the years, people cannot visually see the difference if the quality is like not below 80. So if you go to 80, it's going to look the same as 100. That's what I've read. Uh, people could comment your findings below, um, you know, if you agree with that or disagree with that. Image size, you could change the size. Let's say I want to, you know, share it to Instagram. So that's a uh, well, it's a 1080 height, right? So 1080 height. Or is it width? I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyway, you could change the width, the height, whatever you could do here. Uh, change uh, whatever, you know, canvas size you're usually not going to mess with. And then just click export. And then it's going to ask you where. And you could uh, uh, save it to my desktop, right? So we'll save it to the desktop. I could have renamed it too, but I didn't. Um, so I saved a JPEG, but what if I want to save all this work? Well, then go up to File, down to Save As, and I would recommend you save it as a PSD, a Photoshop file, in this drop down right here. Go to Photoshop, save it as a PSD. It'll save all these layers intact, and I'll save it to the desktop uh, as well, just like that. And now it's saved. I could close this, hit Command Q on my on my Mac to close it. And you can see I have the original DNG raw file right there. I have the JPEG that I just exported uh, from Photoshop. And I have the original PSD file. And if I double click on that, it'll open that back up into Photoshop and all those layers will be there. And I could work on this image again if I want to. So that's how you, or at least I, go about using Denoise AI as a Photoshop plugin. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.